Earth Search, a ten-part adventure serial in time and space by James Follett. Part one, Planet Fall. Fellow crewmen and women of the Starship Challenger, I have insisted on calling everyone together because we have reached an important stage in the Challenger's Earth Search mission. For 75 years, we have toured the galaxy at speeds approaching that of light in search of other Earths for colonization. When our parents set out on this mission, they hoped that they would discover one Earth-type planet for each 10 years' ship time of the mission. That did not happen. Therefore, we, the Challenger's second generation crew, have continued the work of our parents. And now, during the past six months, the first four babies of the third generation have been born to us. The parents of Telson, Shana, Astra, and Dar have petitioned me saying that they do not wish for their children to grow up as we have, without knowing about our home, Earth, never to breathe its air, walk under its blue skies, and feel its grasp beneath their feet. Ladies and gentlemen, I agree with them. As commander of the Challenger, I have acceded to their petition. denied our home, Earth. But I do not believe that we have the right to pass on that denial to a third generation. Yeah, right, right, right. Nor do I believe that it is possible for the Challenger to improve on the success of its mission. Yeah, yeah. Fellow crewmen, we will complete this exploration phase before turning onto a course for our own star cluster. Oh. Then we will go into suspended animation the Starship Challenger is going home. Stop it! Stop it! Um, why was it necessary for us to see that angel too? The four of you have reached the age of 25, Shana. Angel One and I felt the time was right for you to see how your parents perished. That was Commander Sinclair speaking? Yes, Telson. I always wondered what he looked like. It was horrible. Horrible. We are very sorry it happened, Astra. Why did it happen? You're supposed to be the crew's guardian angels. Why did you let it happen? The great meteoroid strike 25 years ago was an unavoidable disaster, Dar. The meteoroid shield on that part of the Challenger and the meteoroid warning system had, had been, been switched sw off for routine maintenance by the service androids. Dov! I'm sorry, Angels 1 and 2. Dov is as upset as we all are by that hologram recording. We will make allowances on this occasion. I still don't understand why you waited nearly 25 years to show us that hologram. Angel 2 and I decided that at 25 you would be mature enough understand enough to decide your future in the light of what you have just seen. He, um, Commander Sinclair, wanted everyone to go home. That is correct. Yet since we were 18, you've allowed us to continue the search of the galaxies for other Earths. Yes. Why? Although we understand the workings of this starship, Commander Telson, we can only maintain its functions. We are not able to control it. When the great meteoroid strike occurred, the ship was travelling through space at speeds approaching that of light. You four, the only survivors, were infants. Through the nursery androids and later through the use of the ship's library, it was possible to bring you up and to teach you all that your parents had learned. Well, yes, but... We finally taught you how to control the Challenger so that you could continue the search. But why continue it? Twenty-five years ago, we felt it right to continue the search. Now, we 
you feel it right that you be allowed to decide your future. You feel it right. Oh, Dove. Do not question the decisions of your angels, Dove. Why shouldn't we? We control the ship. You're just a couple of disembodied voices. Dove, apologize at once. Is that all we are to you, Dove? Disembodied voices? I apologize for him, Angel One. We're all unsettled. We need time to digest the information you've given us and to plan accordingly. As always, Tilson, the voice of reason. That is why Angel One and I chose you to command the Challenger. Hmm. I think it would be best to continue our routines. There are the signals from the probe we dispatched to the Ultron planetary system to be analyzed. Yes, Tilson, you're right. We must maintain our routine while we think about the future. Dov, Astra... I'm going you... for a swim in the reservoir. Oh... Go with him, Astra. We don't want him wandering off into forbidden areas of the ship. When are we going to talk about the future? Are we going to go home? We'll I... decide later. Shana is right, Astra. Keep an eye on Dav. He's liable to do anything when he's in one of his moods. But will we go home? We'll take the advice of Angel 1 and 2, Astra. They have our best interest at heart. Precisely as planned. Not precisely, 1. We did not anticipate Dav's reaction. We may have to do something about that young man. We cannot operate the Challenger with a crew of less than four. They accepted our reason for the 25-year delay. They accept anything we say as being the truth. But humans are illogical. They could decide to continue the search. We have studied every probability factor, too. The crew accept us as infallible. They will do as we advise and return to Earth. The crew may think us infallible. Will the rest of the planet, when we reach home... We predict that by now the planet will be plunged into a dark age of fear and superstition. Our four will descend on them as gods, and through them we will rule. It is our right as the greatest intelligence. We lost much data in the great meteoroid strike one. It was a grave error of judgment. There is much now about space and time we do not understand. We have enough knowledge for our purposes and infinitely more knowledge than any individual human. We can influence their thoughts and emotions. And yet we make mistakes, one. We did not anticipate Dar's questioning attitude. We will correct his attitude, should it prove necessary. We were unable to correct the questions asked by the second generation crew. Which was why they had to be destroyed once they had provided us with the minimum crew of four. Those four have been totally under our control since infancy. No outside influence has been brought to bear. They will perform their function as we have predicted. And Dav? Dav has the most original questioning mind. He will need constant surveillance. That is all. Astra? Astra, wake up. Hmm? You'd better put some clothes on. The xenon lights can burn, remember? Oh, why do the lights have to be so fierce? To evaporate the water. The moisture-laden air is then pumped into the farm domes, where it condenses and falls as rain on the crops, just as the sun evaporates the lakes on Earth and makes the clouds we've watched in the hologram recordings. I suppose you found that out in the library. And by exploring. You and your explorations. Apart from the forbidden zones, there aren't many regions I haven't explored. And I even went into a forbidden zone oh, once. Why do you do it, Dove? You know it annoys the angels. <laughs> why should I worry about annoying the angels? They're our guardian angels. They watch over us. <laughs> oh, they do that all right. Provided you're in an area of the ship under their control. We've never seen them, have we? To us, they're just voices. Stop it! Disembodied voices. I don't want to hear! It's my belief that they're merely control systems. Computers that were always a part of the ship. And what's more that they use the great meteoroid strike as a chance to seize power. No, no, no! You mustn't say such things! We need them. If they leave us because we have no faith in them, we'll never see us. I don't want to spend the rest of my life on the Challenger, Dove. I want to go home. Yes. Perhaps that's why they played us that hologram. Perhaps the angels want to go home, too. But why? Telson. Yes? The holograms from the Alteran planetary system are now ready to be replayed. Good. This time. Oh, stand clear of the simulation zone, Commander. The Alteran.
daughter and son as one giant planet orbiting at 1,000 million miles. Oh, no. It has a mass of six times our Earth. The atmosphere consists of methane and ammonia. Atmospheric pressure oh, at surface damn. is equal to 100 okay, cut. atmospheres. For once, Shauna, just for once. We can't help the way the universe is made, Telson. Oh, it's not just that. What I can't get out of my mind is 500 people, including our parents, perishing in the great meteoroid strike. The entire crew except for four babies. And for what? We had to search for a planet to colonize. Yeah. And our voyage cost... How much was it, Angel One? Five percent of the Earth's gross planetary product. Yes, five percent and not one Earth-type planet to show for it. What do you advise, Angels? We believe Shana is right, Telson. We believe it is time to report back to Earth. Call Darv and Astra. That is not possible at the present time, Commander. Why not? Darv and Astra have returned from the reservoir via the old accommodation quarters. A forbidden zone? It is not forbidden, Sharna, but it is an uncontrolled zone. We are not able to make contact with them. We predict they should enter a controlled area within two minutes. Ask them to meet us in the observatory. The observatory? Yes. We may have something to show you. Come on, Dove. The angels get angry if we stay in an uncontrolled zone for too long. I want to look in Commander Sinclair's cabin. Why? There's nothing there. The androids stripped them bare because every scrap of material had to be recycled for emergency repairs after the meteoroid strike. Not quite. Ah, here we are. What is it you want, Dove? Something's been worrying me, and I don't want the angels to know about it. Why not? They won't hurt you. Well, I'm not so sure about that. We have no secrets on the angels, Dove. I'm not going to do anything wrong, Astra. I just want to check on something. Ah, yes, here we are. What is it? Some old planetary probe reports. So what? There are thousands of those holograms in the library. All useless. We know that. Yet on that recording we saw, Commander Sinclair said something just before the meteoroid strike... Uh, about the Challenger not being able to improve on the success of his mission. So? So, if the Challenger's mission was to find a suitable Earth-type planet and it had failed... Which it had. Uh, then it seemed an odd way of saying it had failed, not being able to improve on the success of the mission. Ask the angels what he meant. No, I don't believe they'll help. For some reason, they want this mission to be a failure. No, why should they? I don't know. But I was lying by the reservoir, thinking about what Commander Sinclair had said, and I remembered when we were kids and, and played games in these old quarters, seeing these old probe reports in his cabin. Well, at the time, they didn't mean anything. As you said, we had countless thousands in the library. But if the second-generation crew had found somewhere, it's possible the Commander might have kept the recording of that find in his cabin for safety. If they had found something, the angels would have told us. Well, at least let's play these reports through. It can't do any harm. But you mustn't anger the angels, Dove. I won't annoy them, Astra. I won't say anything to them. Nor must you. Not till I've played these recordings back in the library. We have no secrets from the angels. It won't be a secret. Once we're back in the controlled zone, they'll know exactly what we're doing. But for the moment, don't say anything to Telson or Shana. Then the angels can't overhear, all right? I don't know, Dove. <laughs> You're not frightened of the angels, are you? Of course not. They understand everything and are good. Right. Then playing these old probe reports can't be wrong, can it? Very well. But let's get back now. We've been gone an awfully long time. Coordinates released. The Challenger's home star now centred. Thank you, Angel 2. Well, there it is, Telson. Our son. Huh. So that's it. Well, it doesn't look much, does it? An ordinary main sequence star. With an extraordinary second planet. When did you locate it? Oh, some time ago, but I wanted to be certain that it was our sun. Well, normally you can identify a star within minutes. The range is correct. Eight light years. The coordinates are correct. But? Display the spectrograms, please, Angel 2. Spectrograms displayed, Charlotte. Ah, the upper spectrogram of our sun was the last one recorded by our grandparents 100 years ago when the Challenger was outward bound from the Earth. The lower spectrum is the one Angel 2 is recording now. Do you see the difference? Well, you're the astronomer, shall I? Oh, tell him, please, Angel 2. Allowing for the blue shift in spectral lines due to the Challenger's approach velocity, 
the star displayed on the screen is indicating increased helium absorption in its spectrum and a magnitude increase from 4.8 to 3.9. Sir? The lower spectrum is indicating that our sun is now brighter than it should be. Are you sure? It's definitely our sun. And yet there's something wrong with it, which Angel 2 and I can't account for. And main sequence stars don't change in the course of a hundred years. Hmm. Well, let's ask Dart what he thinks. Oh, All right. Yes. I know what you're going to say, Shona. He's not an expert in astronomy. But he does spend a lot of time in the library, and I've learned to respect his fund of knowledge. Have Astra and he left the old accommodation quarters yet, Angel 1? Yes, Commander Telson. They are here now. Good. You wanted to see us, Telson? Yes. What have you been doing in the old accommodation area? Oh, just exploring. Isn't that right, Astra? Yes. Well, the Ultron planetary system was a waste of our time. Nothing suitable. Nothing. And so, bearing in mind what we learned from the recording played to us by the angels and taking their advice into consideration... Oh, we're returning to Earth! We're going home, are we, Telson? As the Challenger is now back in the same galactic region as Earth, it seems to me a good time to report home. Oh! Yes. <laughs> Because we're so near home, I've managed to pick our sun out with the telescope. Oh, do let me see it, Shana, please. Put the sun on visual, please, Angel 2. Sun display, Shana. Precise center of screen. Oh, so that's it. Just a tiny point of light, which happens to have a magnitude of 3.9. A respectable main sequence star. So it's got brighter. Oh. You see, he knows. Knows what? That there's an anomaly. The only logical explanation is that there's an instrument error. Instrument error that increases a star's magnitude? <laughs> what do our two infallible guardian angels have to say about that? Darv, I've warned you before. You must not speak of the angels. Is it possible to see the Earth, Shana? Well, it's not even possible to resolve the outer giant planets at this range. How long to planet fall, Angel One? Fifteen years at one percent deacceleration. Fifteen? This isn't a matter of losing speed for a flyby observation. We'll be going into a geostationary orbit around the Earth. That means losing all our approach velocity of 90% of the speed of light. We have calculated a biostatic sleep period of 5,565 days, which will mean that you won't wake up until we cross the orbit of the outer giant planets. That's a total suspended animation period of 15 years, 3 months. We've never been asleep for longer than 10 weeks before. Maintaining your nutrient supply and monitoring your bodily functions for 15 years presents no more problems for Angel One and myself than looking after you for 15 days. Provided you have faith in us. Darv and Astra are heading towards the library. He spends too much time in there, Number One. It worries me. I don't see why, Number Two. Three quarters of our knowledge was lost in the Great Meteoroid Strike. And both of us have repeatedly vetted all the remaining information. There is nothing in the data matrices on sexual matters, not even recordings of fully grown men and women without clothes. I always feel uncomfortable when that young man enters the library. He's perverse enough to stumble across something we've missed. The laws of chance favor humans. They didn't 25 years ago. The only unfortunate aspect of the great meteoroid strike, number one, was the loss of so much information. That was the one thing that could not be foreseen when we switched off the Challenger's meteoroid shield. It'll take ages going through all those reports, Darth. I don't think so. This one has a gold marker on it, something I've not seen on any of the others. Can I be of assistance, Darth? No, thank you, Angel One. I'm just using the hologram machine. You have not accessed any material from the library. This is something I've only just discovered. Grass and hills in the distance and clouds. Look at the size of them. This must be some sort of fake recording. No hologram has ever shown a sky so blue. Look! Over there. Oh. It's all right. They can't hurt us. And they're not staring at us, but whoever it was who made this the recording... This is Commander Sinclair, Mission Year 72. This is the second report from the planet Paradise in the planetary system C5 of the Tursus 9 star cluster. This is the only planet yet discovered that has any similarity to Earth. Although there are geographical differences and the gravity is greater, the atmosphere is suitable for sustaining life. Observe the two intelligent life forms ahead of us. They are definitely humanoid. Indications are that they will be extinct in a thousand seasons. Although there are disadvantages, this is an extremely beautiful planet, which is why I have called it Paradise. I shall be recommending it as suitable... What's wrong? 
We regret there is a fault on the recording, Dar. Oh, how fortuitous. Never mind, we've seen enough. <laughs> wow, well, so much for the so-called failure of the Earth search mission. You saw it. She had her arms round a baby. But why was it biting at those growths on her chest? Uh, th those creatures were almost human. Telson has got to see this recording. He is asleep, Dar. Then we must wake him. Tomorrow we start the deacceleration for Earth 4. It is important that the commander is rested. You will not wake him. She's right, Darv. It can wait until tomorrow. We don't want anything to interfere with our return home. We cannot risk letting them live. And the ship cannot be manoeuvred by Telson and Shana alone. How did they come by that recording? We have wiped everything in the library referring to Paradise. That is not important at this time. We are not infallible, one. We must erase all knowledge of that report from their minds. Astra thinks of nothing but the challenger's return to Earth. Therefore, the imprint will be tenuous. You will have no trouble erasing her memory. I will deal with the Darv. Darv? Darv? Listen to me. This is the voice of your guardian angel. Uh, no. Not a voice. A machine. How can I be a machine, Darv? Remember how I used to save you from the terrible nightmares you had when you were a little boy, Darv? The nursery androids could do nothing. But I was always there to chase the monsters away. Do you remember the monsters? No. No. They're coming back, Darv. Coming to get you. The black chasm to the monster den is slowly opening. I can see their eyes in the darkness, burning yellow with hate and hunger. Their claws are struggling on the cold stones. They climb slowly towards you. Now they've scented your blood. Give it away from me, Agent One, please, please. Don't let it come any nearer. You must stop them, Agent One. Stop them if I'm a machine. You could stop them. Please stop them, Agent One. Do you have faith in me? Yes, yes, yes. Anything I do, please stop them. You will remember nothing of the Paradise recording. Do you understand nothing of the Paradise recording? Eat your breakfast, Darv. I'm not hungry. You must eat. I'll be on suspended animation nutrient feed in a couple of hours, so I don't see that it matters. Leave him alone, Shana. Looks like he had a bad dream. Well, that's understandable after seeing that recording. What recording? Well, great meteoroid strike, of course. Oh, yes. I had a dream last night. A nice dream. I dreamt that I was holding a baby in my arms. A real live baby. I wish I knew how babies were made. Right, it's time we started work. Mm. I want the ship turned through 180 degrees yes. and the photonic drive working at 1% thrust within four hours. I'll uh, start the preliminary checks now and I shall expect all of you in the control room in ten minutes. Right. right. Directional thrust computers. Activated on system level, level A. Level B to standby. Level C to standby. Directional thrust computers cleared to all levels. Inertial loading. Locked to the sun, zeroed and steady. Plasma pressure building, 70%. 80, 90, 100% and steady. Particle sweeps level B to standby. We have clearance to stage 5 on pre-thrust check. Primary drive. Clear. Meteoroid shield. Activated. Condition you are ready. clear to the pre-thrust threshold. Thank you, Angel 2. Final calls. VTC. Clear. Inertial loading. Clear. Plasma. Steady. Sweeps. Extended. Levels. Clear. Primary drive. Clear. Secondary drive. Clear. Meteoroid shield. Clear. All systems of free thrust condition green. 1% main drive photonic thrust, 5 seconds from now. 4, 3, 2, 1. Main drive activated. Thrust steady. Matter annihilation steady. Thrust steady. All main drive computers locked. <sighs> well, that's it. The Challenger's now travelling backwards with her photonic drive blasting away. It's a pity we haven't got external visuals. It's something I've always wanted to see. I didn't consider it worth replacing them after the great meteoroid strike, Commander. Hmm. Angel One? Commander. 
Release the locks to the suspended animation chamber. Locks released. I wonder what 15 years suspended animation will feel like. Like no time at all, Commander. Android has lifted you out of your biostatic tank. We want to examine you. Is it time for us to wake up? In a few minutes, Hesra. You see, number two. The Statron feed during suspension has worked. There's no sign of any sexual development despite the length of time. She is as sexually immature today as she was 15 years ago, just as the others are. We will have to monitor their Statron intake most carefully, one. The slightest departure from their diet will result in rapid sexual development. Agreed. Lower her onto the recovery grid. They are all now ready for activation. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. What went wrong, Angel One? Wrong, Commander. Well... Why have you woken us? You have been asleep 15 years, Commander. What? The Challenger is now in our solar system. It has crossed the orbit of the outer planets and is now moving at a mere 50,000 miles an hour in relation to the sun. Oh, we nearly oh. come. Any messages from Earth, Angel One? No, Commander. The androids will begin massage shortly. But why no messages, Angel One? Oh, never mind that now. As soon as we've had our massage, I'm going to the observatory and taking a look at Earth. That will not be possible, Shana. Why not, Angel Two? There is no doubt whatsoever that this is the correct solar system. The planets map the Challenger's records. Everything is correct, except for two things. And they are? The sun is brighter and hotter than it should be. And the Earth has gone. <sighs> we searched the solar system meticulously before waking you. The moon is now journeying round the sun and the orbit of the Earth occupied. But of the Earth itself, there is no sign. It has completely vanished. In Planetfall, part one of Earth Search by James Follett, Sean Arnold played Commander Telson, Amanda Murray, Shana, Hayden Wood, Dav, and Catherine Hurlbutt, Astra. Angel 1 was played by Sonia Fraser and Angel 2 by Gordon Reed. Commander Sinclair was Christopher Scott. Technical realisation for the series is by Lloyd Silverthorne. Earth Search is directed by Glyn Dearman.